wonder where they're at. I'm getting hungry. I don't know. They're usually here by now. Here comes old Tom. Sean. Hi, Mr. Evans. Hi to you, Sean. Think you can fetch a mug of coffee to me at the bank? Sure thing. Tom, ain't you just a little bit late? <laughs> Morning, Sheriff. Henry. Howdy. One thing I don't understand about money, Mr. Evans. Now, what's that, Henry? Why are new bills always so heavy? <laughs> Very <laughs> old or new. 121,000 is a full sock. Colleen Mako. Still hanging around. Four days now. That's his right. He served his time. But he swore to kill Mr. Bragan and Ben Cartwright. He's got Mr. Bragan so jumpy now, he... I think you ought to run him out of town, Sheriff. Oh, come now, Tom. He made them threats a long time ago, and he's had five years in jail to simmer down. How's about getting that money inside the bank so I and the boys can go get some breakfast? Oh, oh. Thank you for your trouble, Sheriff. Don't mention it. All right, boys, let's go and get them vittles before they get cold. You, Sean? Henry from Wells Fargo. Get up. What, what are you doing?
believe it. Where were you when this happened? I was over at the hotel having my breakfast. But I was here when the Wells Fargo shipment arrived, and I stayed with Tom until he got it. The pouch is gone. We already looked for it. Well, that's just fine. My cashier murdered. $121,000 stolen. You know, this is your fault, Roy. Mine? There isn't any doubt about who did it, is there? You remember what I said when Cully Mako rode into town? If I told you once, I told Sam, you... Sam, you told me, that's right, several times that you wanted Cully Mako locked up. But he'd broken no law. What do you call this? And he swore to kill me and Ben. What are you going to do? Wait till he does that, too, before you catch him and hang him? Now, listen, Roy. Sean, think clearly now. Did you see anybody around the bank when you come in here with the coffee? No, sir. Nobody. And was the door, uh, was it open? Kind of. It opened when I tried it. Did Mr. Evans say anything? No, sir. He just was all still and scary. Then you just run for help. As fast as I could. Thanks, boy. You've done the right thing. Now it's time you'll be getting home, because your ma's going to be worried about you. Wasted time. You should be out looking for colleague Mako. Roy's got deputies out looking for him. Deputies? What we need is a posse. Sam, I'm going to organize two posses. I'll lead one, and I'm counting on Ben here to lead the other. Oh. Yeah, sure. Uh, Roy, I'll, uh... Well, Joe's in San Francisco. I'll have Hoss and Candy ride with us. Good. Hey, there's a sheriff. Sheriff, what's going on? He won't tell nobody nothing. Give me a chance. Give a chance. I'll tell chance. you, boys. I'll tell you. The bank was robbed, and a man that we all respected, Tom Evans, was murdered. First time in months I haven't met the Wells Fargo coach. Could have been me. You see, I told you something was going on. Oh, look, that's terrible. He's a good old boy. Hey, Sheriff. Sheriff, who done it? We don't know for sure, but I want Cully Mako brought in for questions. Cully Mako, he's just gonna... I just seen him. He's been hanging around town here last oh, week. I'm gonna need 15 to 20 good posse men, armed and ready to ride. You bring bedrolls, my officer will furnish the grub and the cooking gear. How soon, Roy? Just as soon as I can get these men sworn in. And you do solemnly swear, as authorized posse men, to uphold the laws of the state of Nevada and Story County? Yes, yeah, yeah, sir. Pick up your cartridges, men. Now we're going to split up. I'll ride south to stop Mako in case he's headed for the state line. And Ben Cartwright here will lead the rest of you men in a sweep over towards Sierra Pass. Any questions? No. Now no, no, let's get going. Get your rifles, men. Okay, just in time, boys. You boys raise your right hands or swear you in. You do solemnly swear as authorized posse men to uphold the laws of the state of Nevada and Story County? I do. Let's ride. Get him. Spread out. Search that whole slope and the flat beyond. Anybody sights may go by three shots. Covered the flats and the Thule's west of the river. Not a sign of Mako. Mr. Cartwright won't wet your whistle a little bit. It'll warm you up. <laughs> Sam, these horses look spent. We better backtrack about half a mile. Camp by spring there. <laughs> Cut. 
Charlie. No, no, that ain't what I'd call a real glad welcome. Don't seem none too happy to see me. She holds with the law, Cully. We both do. Even against your own brother? You know, there was a time when I used to hold with the law, too. Do you th really think Curly Mako intends to kill you? I don't know. He said so. Why is he after you? Goes back a ways. Long before you came around. Curly stood trial for a bank robbery. Sam Bregan identified him as a robber. I was the foreman of the jury that convicted him. How much time did he get? Five years. It's a big chunk out of any man's life. Who is Cully? Does he uh, come from around here? Oh, somewhere up north a bit. He's a trapper. Well, I guess a trapper can hold up a bank as soon as anybody else. Yeah, I guess so. Mr. Cartwright. Get that man off that horse. <laughs> We're just practicing a little, Mr. Cartwright. We're getting ready when we catch up with old Cully, right, boys? <laughs> Buzz, this is not a lynch party. Ben, Cully is wanted for robbery and murder. We may have trouble proving that in the court of law. And if we can't, he's sure going to kill one or both of us. Easier to hang him, get it over. Now, Sam, that's not what we're here for. Buzz, you heard Mr. Kurt, right? Turn him loose. Sure.
sure took good care of it. That's the least I can do. Well, I'm going to take this. You can have these. I'm going to need some shells, and I'm going to need a carrying sack. Six gun and a rifle. Now I got a shotgun. And do me a little hunting. If it was just fur he was after, Harriet and me wouldn't mind you staying. Thanks. Shotgun ain't much good except for a rabbit or men. Cully. The past is best forgotten. That's what you always said, Kevin. Something the matter, Paul? I was just thinking. Colin Mako's brother testified at his trial. They worked the trap lines together. Now, when a man's on the run, he usually heads for the country he knows best. And the people he knows best. Yeah. His brother's place is just south of the double notch, just over the crest. Ma'am? You Mrs. Mako? Uh, yes. Yes, I'm uh, Ben Cartwright. Uh, is your husband around? I... I'd like to talk to him for a minute or two. Well, he's uh, inside the house. You you can go in. Thank you, ma'am. Come in. Howdy. I'm Ben Cartwright. I remember. You were the foreman on the jury. Yeah. There's been some trouble in Virginia City, Mr. Mako. In fact, there's been a killing. And the sheriff would like to talk to your brother, ask him a few questions. Has he been around here? Nobody here except me and my wife. I haven't seen Cully since the trial. You're welcome to look around if you like. Uh, no, thank you. That, uh, that won't be necessary. Sorry to trouble you. Excuse me, ma'am. Thank you. Two people live here, three plates on the table. He's been here and gone, but he hasn't got too much of a head start. Cartwright. You make one move and you're going to be dead right now. Now get up slow. Turn around and face me. Come on. Now take your right hand and undo your belt buckle. Drop it. Now, you owe me, Cartwright. You know that. We'll have another man on that jury, Cully. <laughs> you were the one that gave the word, though. You was the one that they listened to. You took five years of my life, mister. How old are you? I reckon if I was to shoot you down right now and take your life, we'd be just about even. Except maybe me a little bit more. Stop it, Mako.
Now what? Woman deputized to take you back into town, Connie. For what? Murder and robbery. I didn't hear you name the person I was supposed to have uh, killed. Tom Evans. The Tom Evans that works in Bragan's bank? Somebody shot him? That's right. And robbed the bank. Where's your horse? Over there. Candy? How much money was it I was supposed to stole this time? $121,000. Well, that's an important lot of money. That should make me an important man. I tell you what, let's do. Why don't you all go in my saddlebag here and get it out, and let's divide it up and make us a deal. You figuring on waiting around and meeting that posse tonight? Uh, well, I guess we better ride straight into town. Be faster that way, anyway. You fellas trying to save time or trouble? Go on, Cully, let's go. Candy, you're right, point. Yeah. You fellas sure are being mighty careful. I keep telling you I didn't do anything. Now, why are you taking me in? Now, Cully, you're in town for four days. And the moment something happens, the moment there's a murder, the moment the bank is robbed, you disappear. I threatened a man five years ago, Sam Bregan, five years ago. And then I spent five years behind walls, and I changed my mind about pulling the trigger. But he didn't know that. Sam Bregan didn't know that. So I come back to town and figure I'd sweat him a little bit. Walk down the street, look in the window of his bank, make him wonder a little bit, make him sweat. Now, that's mighty small revenge for the five years he stole from my life. You keep talking about Sam Bregan stealing five years of your life. I stole five years of your life. Let me tell you something. Sam Bregan testified under oath in court that you were the fellow in the bank. Look, that... any man can put his hand on a book and still tell a lie. Not Sam. He built that bank on a handshake. You bet sure. He's your friend, so he can't tell a lie. Now, come on, he can make one mistake. One mistake. Ain't a man alive hasn't made a mistake. Who pays for yours? I do. And me. And me. Don't you forget that. I spent five years of my life paying for his mistake or lie. They're up ahead, resting their horses. Did they see you? Afraid so. Well, come on. I see you got him. Yeah, that's right, Sam. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll just take him back to town. Oh, wait a minute. What's the rush? We've got a few questions we want to ask Cully. Yeah. <laughs> we got a few questions we want to ask him. so you have a fair trial. You'll get a trial, but not the kind you mean. What's got into you, Sam? This is not a court. We're not a judge, a jury. We're 
We're Mako's peers, Ben. Now listen, we were deputized to do one thing. To find him, arrest him, and bring him into town. No more! I'm sorry, Ben. That's the kind of thinking that got Tom Evans killed. All right, get him up on the horse. Let's yeah. go. Hey, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, hold it! What's the matter with you, all of you? Would you all deputize the same as Horse and Candy and me? Were you sworn to uphold the law? We're hanging a guilty man. That's upholding the law, right? Yeah, right, 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 get him up, Who right. says he's guilty? It's cold-blooded murder. That's all it is, cold-blooded murder. And you'll all pay for it. Oh, yeah. Much more than Mako ever did. Ten, fifteen years in jail, you may even hang for it. Now, don't listen to him. He's just trying to scare you out of it. You bet I'm trying to scare you out of doing something stupid. Brigham, I ain't gonna go to jail for nothing or nobody. I don't care. Right. I'm not right. going to jail. Now, wait a minute. No, no. We took a vote. We said we were gonna hang Cully, and that's what we're gonna do. Quit the talk and get it done now. Get Cully up there. Get going, Cully. All right, you wanna hang him? Fine. Go right ahead. Sam, I think you ought to hear this. Before you hang Cully here, I think you ought to know that there's gonna be an awful lot of shooting. <laughs> You're gonna have to kill all three of us before you get to him. So you better get your guns out, all of you. Come on, get him up. Go ahead, pull the trigger. You too, Sam. Like last time. The crowd out there is getting bigger and uglier by the second. You just brought in a man accused of murder and bank robbery. Now, what do you expect? I never lost a prisoner yet, and I ain't about to start. Seems like most folks out there feel like the same way we do. Hang Cully quick, get it over. Ain't that too bad? Good night, Ben. Ben, I'm sending a telegraph to the circuit judge. He'll be here in a day or two. I'm in no hurry. Cully? I've decided to have my lawyer defend you. He's in Carson City right now, but he'll be back in plenty of time. And you'll have a fair trial, I can tell you that. Will I? Last time I stood trial in this town, I got five years for something I didn't even do, and that was just robbery. This time it's murder. Now you hear that crowd out there, and you know what kind of trial I'm gonna get to. Thanks for saving my life so that they could hang me legal. You feel all right, Paul? Yeah, I feel fine. Well, you turn down the ham, the hot cakes, biscuits. That's the, uh, Second time you sugared your coffee, I figured maybe something was wrong. Two robberies. $40,000, $121,000. And all that money just disappears. You know what the folks around town are saying about Mako? That he stashed that money off someplace. Do you believe that? man robbed a bank once, got off $40,000, stashed it away, got caught, went off to jail, did his time. Come back, he'd get that money and go off someplace where he could enjoy it. But to come back and rob the same bank again and make double trouble for himself, it just 
for some reason or other, it just don't make sense. Yeah. That's the third dime you've sugared that coffee ball. Not only the missing money bothers me. That, that theory about revenge, that doesn't hold water either. Connie Mako had me dead in his sights. He could have pulled the trigger any minute. And he didn't. Well, you know, he hung around in Virginia City for four days. That gave him plenty of opportunity to gun down Sam Bregan if he wanted to, didn't it? Yeah, there's another thing. Sam Bregan. And why would a decent, law-abiding man like Sam Bregan suddenly turn pure savage? Well, you know, Paul, he and Tom Evans were good friends. I know, I know, but... He was so anxious to see Cully hang, lynched, no trial, nothing, just... You, know, you think Cully's right? About what? About it being impossible for him to get a fair trial here in Virginia City. Well, I wouldn't bet on that, would you? I sent the wire, Mr. Cully. Oh, good, good. Uh... Have some breakfast, Candy. Yeah, there was plenty left. All Paul had was a little coffee with his cup of sugar. Candy? Did the sheriff say anything about when the circuit judge might be arriving? He'll be here tomorrow. Yeah, they're in a big rush, ain't they? Well, if you ask me, the uh, verdict's in already anyway. The town's in a hanging mood. Bregan, uh, Buzz, Grifty, the other men in that posse, they're going to do everything they can to keep it that way. Do, Paul. Well, right now, I'm going to do this month's bookkeeping. And this afternoon, I think I'll ride into Virginia City and see if the answer to that telegram Candy sent is waiting for me. Yeah, I changed my mind. I think I'll have a cup of that sugar. I hope there's something left. Cartwright can't object. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, Mr. Cartwright, you uh, spoke up a lot out there on the trail. How come you ain't speaking up in here? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Out on the trail, Cully Mako's safety was my responsibility. Right now, his future is in the hands of the court. <laughs> and a jury. Let's not forget about the jury. Our jury, and it's all nice and legal. <laughs> future, huh? A real short future. Yeah, <laughs> oh, Cully's gonna dance himself a little old jig. The only trouble is he ain't gonna have nothing to stand on but air. Then? Oh, I'm waiting for you. Boys are really talking about <laughs> These things are like grass fires. They get real hot and they go right out. Not always in time. This crowd's whiskey fed. Wonder who's buying the bottles. I believe I could make a good guess. I believe I could too. Carson Stage. Hey there, more than an hour late. James Snow. Yes, I'm Ben Cartwright. This is Sheriff Coffey. Snow, how do you? Oh, uh, that's my bad. This way.
Uh, I'm sorry, sir. We're closed. Oh, I wanted to talk to Mr. Bragan. That's all right, Phillips. We've always got time for Ben Cartwright. Thank you. Ben? Um, Glad you came in. I owe you an apology. If you hadn't come in today, I was going to ride out to the Ponderosa. Thank you for not letting me make a fool of myself. No thanks necessary. On the contrary, if it hadn't been for you, Cully Mako would be dead now. And a large share of the blame would be mine. See, I've been pleased. See, Tom Evans was my close friend. Worked for me for many years. The brutality, the, the way he was killed. And it shook me deeply. But even that's no excuse, Ben. I'm sincerely glad you stopped the lynching. And I'm glad that Cully's going to stand trial in a court of law. Well, I'm happy to hear you say that, Sam. I need your help making sure that it's really a fair trial. Excuse me, Mr. Bragan, will there be anything else? Uh, no. That'll be all, Wes. I'll take care of the vault. Excuse me, man. See you in the morning. Bye, this wild talk that whipped this town into an uproar. Buzz and Grifty. Yeah. Yes, I've heard some of that. I'll do everything I can. Thank you. Well, murder trial or no murder trial, you know, life still goes on. I've had a uh, timber deal on the fire that came to a boil today. Buying and selling? Buying, $20,000 tract. Oh, that's no problem. The Ponderosa account is certainly... Oh, no, well, I, well, I appreciate that, but... The point is, the fellow I'm buying it from, well, he's an old gentleman, and uh, he wants to see the cash. <laughs> you know. So I uh, I made out a check. You just cash that. Oh, sure, I'd be glad to. Can I just uh, endorse it? Yeah. Old codgers still don't believe in banks. Oh, I lost you. There we are. I'll just uh, look these over first. You mean count it? I'm sure all the money is here. I want to check something else. What's that list you have there? the serial numbers of those bills in that $121,000 Wells Fargo shipment. That money was stolen. I know. Ben, you... you can't think that that money could be in my vault. Unless you think that I... Well, now, if it didn't hurt so much to know that you think I could be a thief and a killer, this would be very funny indeed. And those stolen bills were never found. So you think they're in my vault? You believe Cully and suspect me. Ben, I'm amazed. My turn to apologize. I'll give you back your own words. No apology necessary. You only did what you thought you had to. Yeah. No compliment to me, but I understand. At least you waited until after closing hours. I thank you for that. Good afternoon, Mr. Bragan. 
good afternoon. I think you know Mr. Snell. Chief Bank Examiner for the State of Nevada. Well, yes, of course, but... I've asked Mr. Snell to examine the money in the vault. And your books. As one of this bank's chief depositors, I've asked for a special audit. I'll say one thing for you, Ben. When you get hold of an idea, you hang on like a bulldog. My pleasure, sir. Step this way. Sir. Oh, uh, Mr. Snell, I'm really going to enjoy this. Because when you're through, Ben Cartwright is going to have to buy me the finest bottle of brandy in Virginia City. I assume you'd like to check the cash first, if you please. Right this way. After you, sir. You win. And you lose. Now, Sam, I know you're not going to get away with this. Never mind that. Unbuckle your gun belt. Come on, hurry up. Now take the money. Put it on the counter. Into the street and out of town. And if anybody should ask, we're going to the Ponderosa for dinner and a little chess. Now move. Come on, move. Now lock the door. Now out. Come on, Ben, move. All right, there. Close the door. for me inside, Hoss. Inside? Right, turn around. Back up the street. Come on. All right. Cross the street. Come on, move. to turn. I, I had shares in all the wrong minds. I kept losing. I, I didn't know how to cover up anymore. And I had to protect the depositors. You too, Ben. Ben, please, I don't want to die. Please, I don't want to die. Ben, please. State will be glad to make restitution of some kind for them five years, possibly in the form of a cash award. Yes. I'm not without influence in the state capital, and I shall do whatever I can to help. Uh, thank you. Man can always use money. Here's your shotgun. 
you. And your rifle. Very good. Well, Mr. Cartwright, I'll be seeing you. You believed what Bragan said on the witness stand under oath. I can't fault you for that. You were sure there when I needed you. Would you do me one favor, though? Don't sit on any more juries. You've been convicted by a jury of your peers of the murder of a Ponderosa cowhand, name of Walter Finn Harrell, which he come to town to play a friendly game of stud poker and wound up getting himself killed. It is therefore considered and ordered by this court that you, Isham Troxel, shall suffer the punishment of death by hanging in the week commencing Sunday, September 6th, the year of our Lord, 1868, and may God have mercy on your miserable soul. Your Honor, my brother's name. Let that be a lesson to any other scissor bill which they get caught with an ace up their sleeve and try to shoot their way out of it. Your Honor. Court's adjourned. I demand a hearing. Don't worry, guys. He ain't gonna get away with this. Judge? Ben? Boys? Judge Owen. When are you coming out to visit us again? Not soon. Socializing after a hanging case. Ain't quite seemly for a man in public office, but I thank you kindly. I want a word with you, sir. Case is closed. If my brother dies because of that preposterous sentence of yours, you'll die too. Just as sure as my name is Cato Troxel. You're a bigger fool than I thought you was, Troxel. Make a threat like that in front of all these witnesses? I mean it, sir. Then it'll be Troxel and Troxel on Boot Hill, instead of in that new law office across the street. If my brother hangs, I'll kill you. And I won't end up on Boot Hill. I'm going to let that last remark go by for two reasons. First, your blood brother just got sentenced to hang, which it would naturally lather you up a mite. Second, because it's 12 o'clock noon, and it's time for me to go home and eat my dinner. Fried chicken, northern style. <laughs> Hey, you know, I think there's something wrong with me. I really do. I really do. Look, here I am. A, I'm a young man. I, I got a little money in the bank. I don't want to go someplace, see something different. Like where? Like where? I don't know. Back east. Got all the places I can go. In. St. Louis, Kansas City, Cincinnati. Cincinnati? Why would you want to go to Cincinnati? I don't want to go to Cincinnati. That's what I think is the matter with me. I ought to want to go to Cincinnati, but I like it here. Sometimes, Joe, there ain't no way of figuring that mind of yours. I know what you mean. That's bothering me, too. You're looking for something different. Maybe coming right over there. You was a bossy looking galoot. <laughs> With two sons, one fat and one pretty. Yes, that uh, seems to be a pretty fair description. Uh, this is Hoss, the fat one. And uh, this is the pretty one, Joe. And uh, who are you? Oh, oh I I'm George. And that there's my Uncle Enos. Enos Blessing, at your service, sir. Well, Mr. Blessing. How do you do, sir? I am here to remind you of your mortality. Someday, a stone like this is going to mark your final resting place. Well, there's a happy subject just before supper. 
That ain't it, mister. But one of these days, them boys are going to have to buy you a stone just like that one. Now, now don't you believe it, Pa. We'd oh, never no. let you down like We've that. Got more no, we'll get a great big oh, granite yeah, thing. Paul, we're going to buy you an expensive one. I mean, a great big one. We're going to put it your name on it. It's going to say Ben Cartwright of the Ponderosa well, Thank you very much. Boys, it's really very touching your concern for me, but I feel rather hale and hearty at the moment. I don't think I can use one of those just yet. Ah, exactly. What could a cold stone say of this handsome gentleman? Could it speak of his warm smile, of his upright character, of his manly appearance? Certainly not. What he needs is a different kind of memorial. Uh, you know, you're right. You're absolutely right, and he's got one. His fine sons, we will be his memorial. Hey, yeah, that's right, boy. Don't you forget it. Yes, indeed, boys, you certainly will be. But what kind of different memorial were you thinking of? Well, I was thinking, sir, of a photograph. Ah, a photograph. Oh, uh, like a tintype, only it's, uh, that, that's a new process, isn't it? Quite right, sir. A veritable likeness, produced by the chemical action of light, on paper sensitized by the mysterious properties of precious metal, to reproduce his very image. George? George? The samples. Oh. Is George... Uh... George is my niece. Is that where you, you do your work in that contraption? Uh, yes, sir. That is my travel in portable dock room. I have just opened a new studio in Virginia City. Have you? Enos Blessing Portraits in Silver. Uh, the samples, George, if you please. You should do very well there. Uh, thank you, sir. May I show you some of my work? Vice President of the Union Pacific. Hmm. Ship Captain. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sheriff. Very good. Oh, how did this get in here, George? The, the, the horse thief. <laughs> horse thief. <laughs> hey, you know, Paul, they're pretty fancy. You know what we could do? We could frame you and hang you right up over the fireplace. Yeah, well, what you should ought to do is get one taken of each of you, and then you could hang them all up together. <laughs> exactly. A father and his sons. What an inspiring subject. I could do it right here, right in front of the house. Ah, as a matter of fact, I can even throw in a group picture of all your ranch hands. Hey, hey, you, you know the fellows that like that? Yeah. Oh, right now? I mean, it's summertime. Uh, no, 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 that would be tomorrow, uh, when the light's a little better. Uh, that is, if you could bed me down for the night. I think we'll do it, Paul. I'm all for it. That'd be a bad idea. Certainly, of course, we can put you up in the bunkhouse and we have a spare room for your niece. Uh, no, no, thank you. Uh, uh, George has to go back to town for some supplies. Come here. Nice, huh? I want that new hypo. It's back at the studio. We have plenty of... Shh. I want the new hypo. And listen, when you get into town, I want you to find Mr. Cato Troxel and tell him I'll be making the Cartwright pictures at noon tomorrow. Do you understand? No, why do you... Want... Never mind why. Just do it. And be back here early tomorrow morning. Yes, yeah? come on. Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> I'm just waiting for Mr. Hoss. Which horse? Can't you hurry up, Hoss? Well, well, we can't hurry this, Mr. Cartwright. This is going to take all morning. All morning? Yeah, well, this is a complicated chemical process. I have to prepare every one of these plates in the dark room before I can expose them. So long. Mm -hmm. Well, I figured we all get our picture took. I didn't want to look like no saddle ramp, so I've been in there dudin' up. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, get in post, George. I'm just loosen up now, Mr. Haas. You're stiffer than a hard shell deacon. Mm -hmm. All of you. The whole side better off to set up with that tombstone, I'll tell you that. Mm -hmm. All right, now. Now, look this way, everybody. I want you to watch, Georgie. That's fine. Now, smile. Breath. Ah, that's 
That's fine. fine. Now hold it. Very dignified, Mr. Cartwright. Ah, that's fine. Now, now hold it. Now, watch the birdie, Mr. Haas. Beep, 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 beep. That's fine. Hold it. <laughs> What's so funny? What's so funny? <laughs> you think it's funny I got my picture taken? <laughs> You're gonna get your picture taken now. No, 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 just a moment. Uh, Mr. Cartwright, you're forgetting. I promised a picture of you and your whole bunch. All the cowboys and all the visitors, everybody. Complimentary, no charge. Oh, that's a good deal if I ever heard one. Well, why not? We've wasted the whole morning anyway. Sure. All right, now, everybody, line up over there. Get over Come on, let's get on. Come on now. There we are. Now, all set now? All right now, everybody freeze now. And smile a little. Oh, that's just fine. I made you a promise, sir. I'm here to keep it. I'll make you one. You pull that trigger, you'll hang higher than your brother did. take a little ride somewhere. I want to talk to Mr. Troxell private. Did you make them? Yeah. The group photograph too? Yeah. Do you have the plate prepared? Certainly. All right, get out your camera. Not before I see the color of your money. <laughs> Here you are, you can count it later. Well, I guess I'll be arrested as soon as I ride into town. Yeah. There'll be a coroner's hearing in the morning. That's enough. I don't want to hear about it. I don't know how I get in this in the first place. Well, you got into it on account of Georgie, Enos. That was a very unselfish thing for you to do. But all I care about is, will it be ready in the morning? It'll be ready. It better be. It'll be ready. Now, you, you just get in front of the camera. All right. Uh, no, 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 that's too close. You'll have to go back about five, six feet. Right there, that's fine. Now, turn around, face me. Ah, we got it. Yeah, we huh? 
Now, don't move. All right, now, hold still. Ready? I'll get around to it. Sure do like that little Joe. <laughs> He's as handsome as a new steamboat. Hey, didn't you think so? He sure is handsome. <laughs> I saw you gawking at him. He didn't see me gawking at him, did he? That's not the point. The point is, was he gawking at you? <laughs> oh, no. Of course not. He thought you was a boy. Just look at yourself. When did you wash your face last? Forget. Exactly. Well, you're all through being a tomboy. You're going to a female academy back east to learn how to be a lady. Oh, that old subject again. How can I go to a female academy? Damn place to cost big money. I got big money. Yeah. Well, go on, go on, open it. Twenty dollar gold pieces. Fifty of them. A thousand dollars. Where'd you get all this? Well, you might say it's my life savings. Oh, Uncle Enos, I don't want to go to no female academy. I want to stay here with you. Well, you can't stay here with me. You're going back east to school. To, to Illinois or Missouri. I don't want to be a lady. That's fine. I'll join a medicine show. Become a saloon girl. I'll marry a gambler. You can marry a Paiute if you want to, but not until you're a lady. I'm gonna help you pose your pictures and, and work with you in the dark room and, and poach your eggs the way you like them. I'll poach my own eggs. Then you did not hear the shot, Mrs. Neely? Might have, might not. I was cooking, using pine knots to get a hot fire, and everything was popping and snapping. Well, just one more question, Mrs. Neely. Uh, what time would you say it was when you discovered the body of your husband? Well, I can't say exactly, Doc, but uh, I think I can come to it through my fried chicken. I always give my chicken a good 40 to 45 minutes, put it on about half past 11, because he adjoins his court right at noon. Then it takes him 10 minutes to come home, feed his horse. Then he washes up and sits down at a quarter past. I mean, he used to. <laughs> anyway, uh, my chicken was just about done when I heard him come riding up. And uh, he didn't come in, and he didn't come in, and so I went out to see what was keeping him, and there he was. <laughs> Fried chicken was his favorite. Then you would say that he was shot a few minutes after 12 o'clock noon? Yes, sir. That's all, Mrs. Neely. Thank you. Ben Cartwright, will you take the stand, please? Swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God. I do. Be seated. On Tuesday, September 1st, did you overhear a conversation between Judge Neely and Cato Troxell? Yes, sir, I did. Would you like to tell us about it? Happened right over there. I heard Cato Troxell threaten Judge Neely. He said that if his brother was hanged, he'd kill Judge Neely. Thank you. That's all, Ben. Thank you. Just a minute. Acting as my own attorney, I'd like to ask the witness a few questions, if I may. I guess it's your right. Thank you, sir. Mr. Cartwright, yesterday a man named Enos Blesson came to your ranch and took a group photograph of you, your cow hands, and all your visitors? That's right. At what time was that group photograph taken? About uh, a little after 12 noon, I guess. Well, then, anybody who was at the Ponderosa at the time that group photograph was taken 
couldn't possibly have shot Judge Neely. Oh, no. Don't you remember seeing me there at uh, 12 noon or a little after? I certainly did not. Well, you were facing the camera at the time the photograph was taken. All your visitors were lined up behind you. Yes? Well, then I could have been there and you mightn't have seen me. Well, why would you want to come to the Ponderosa? I came to make you an offer on your Lake Tahoe property. Mr. Corner, he didn't make me any offer on any Lake Tahoe property. Well, you were so busy, I thought it better to come back another day. No, sir, he didn't make any... Thank you, sir. That'll be all. Mr. Carner, may I testify on my own behalf? That'll be all, Mr. Cartwright. You may take the stand now, Mr. Troxell. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, say help you God. I do. Gentlemen, I'd like to make a... Statement for the record. Yesterday, at a few minutes after 12 noon, I was at the Ponderosa when that group photograph was made. And the photograph will prove it. You were in the photograph? I was. Consequently, I couldn't have been in Judge Neely's stable at the same time. Where is this photograph now? Well, I don't rightly know. I suppose Mr. Blessing has it. Didn't see my photograph. This hearing is adjourned to the photographer's place. The jury, the witnesses, and the prisoner will come along with me. Weren't you going to get your pony shod today? Yeah. Well, go on and do it. Does it have to be in that slab-sided east? Ain't there no female academies in this whole big eagle spread in west? No. And go tend to your pony. Right now. Yeah, yes, sir? I'm Dr. Martin, county coroner. We're holding a hearing in the death of Judge Neely. Ah, oh, yes, sir. I heard about that. Would it be all right if I bring my jury in, please? Oh, of course. Thank you. You may come in, gentlemen. Now, did you take some photographs yesterday at the Ponderosa? Uh, yes, sir, I did. I'd like you to produce them for the inspection of the jury, please. Oh, well, now, uh, those are the property Mr. Cartwright and Oh, Mr. Blessing, I wish you would produce those photographs. Yes, sir. The one you made about noon yesterday, the big group photograph. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Ah, here it is. the jury? Looks like our verdict is clear. Death at the hands of an unknown party. Well, I guess you won't be needing me any further. No. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Cartwright, for furnishing me with an alibi. Hmm. Good day, gentlemen. never seen that photographer. Hey, Troxel, a perfect alibi. Well, if Troxel's innocent, Joe, I'm glad we did see the photographer. I'd hate to see an innocent man hang. Well, I say he's guilty. Well, Joe, there he is, right there in the picture. Did you show the picture to all the hands? 
Yes, of course I did. Nobody remembers seeing him there. Well, look, what about the men in the back from the Double H? Maybe we went over and talked to them. Maybe they know something. Joe, what good luck going to do? If he's here, he is here. And he's there in the picture. All right, so he was here. Wait a minute. Suppose Judge Neely's wife made a mistake about the time he came home. Look, she testified she was in the kitchen. There was a lot of noise. She couldn't hear anything. Suppose he got home at 11.30 instead of 12.15. He'd had plenty of time to ride Joe, back out here. Joseph, everybody knows that Judge Neely was a man of habit. He was punctual. At 12 o'clock sharp. He shut his court. At 12.15, he was home having lunch. At 1.30, he opened up court again. People set the clock by him. That's gonna be something. All right, he was here. All right, he was here on the Ponderosa when the picture was taken. Suppose he didn't kill the judge. Suppose he hired somebody to kill him. Troxel's got plenty of money. There's plenty of guns for hire in Virginia City. All right, what are you gonna do? You're going to go around to everybody who wears a gun and say, did uh, Cato Troxel hire you to kill Judge Neely? Is that what you're going to do? No, I'm going to go talk to Cato Troxel. Oh. And what's he going to tell you he didn't tell the coroner's jury? Oh, maybe the coroner went about it the wrong way. I guarantee you I can make him talk. Oh, can you? How, with your fists? Yes, if I have to. Oh, very good. By all means, use your fists. Why don't you try using your head sometime? You might eventually get someplace. Oh, go on, start swinging. Haven't seen a good fight in weeks. You're not gonna see one now either. We're having a family talk. Is that any of your business? Uh, no, not at all. Well, then why don't you stay out of it? Go take a ride or something. Joe. You mean you're not extending the famous Cartwright hospitality? All right. The boys said the picture was here. I'll just uh, have a look at that and leave. Well, go on with your family discussion. <laughs> Were the boys um, resisting one of your fatherly lectures, Mr. Cartwright? I'm not the habit of giving fatherly lectures. And if I do, it's possibly because they need it. Might have been a good idea if your father had given you a few. Oh, he did. Well, obviously, they didn't have much effect. Oh, yes, they did. I left home. I can understand how Truxell got into the picture, but I can't understand how he got this shadow on the side of his face. What are you talking about? Well, you got a funny kind of sun at the Ponderosa because it casts shadows in two different directions at once. Well, that's kind of impossible, isn't it? I don't want to give any fatherly lectures. But that's a shadow, isn't it? Yes, it is. And do you see shadows in anybody else's face? Funny, isn't it? You think that's funny? You should have seen what happened to me in St. Louis once. A young fellow was uh, doing a couple of tintypes of me. He was new in the business. He got mixed up and he put both pictures on the same picture. And I came out looking like twins. What's that got to do with Cato? I didn't say it had anything to do with Cato, but uh, just thought I'd throw it into the general pot of interesting information. Can you? You said this, uh, this fellow made. Two pictures of you on the same picture. Same picture. Call it a double exposure. <sighs> now, if a, if a photographer can, can make two pictures on the one picture, a mistake, why couldn't he do the same thing on purpose? Couldn't Troxel have got Mr. Blessing to make this double exposure, we're putting Troxel in this picture without Troxel having been here in the first place. I think somebody better go have a nice talk with Troxel and ask him some questions. No, 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 not yet, not yet. What are we going to do? Well, just let me think for just a minute, will you? Now, if, if this is a photographic trick and there are two people involved in this murder, Mr. Troxel and the photographer. Now, let's take Mr. Troxel. He's got a legal mind. Huh? He thinks things through very carefully. He'd be prepared for 
Almost any eventuality. Our photographer friend, Mr. Blessing. He's a different kind of man. I think he could be persuaded to help us out. But, Paul, what are we waiting for? <sighs> for me to finish this last year and for you to get the horses ready. Now, let's get. Wait for you soon, Paul. Hi, George. Oh, howdy. Can I help you? Well, I was looking for your Uncle Enos. Is he around? Oh, no, sir. He's out on the Carson City cutoff making some pictures. Ah. He sure makes some good pictures, doesn't he? <laughs> he sure does. Had to put that one up because everyone was coming in and asking to see it. Yeah. Tell you what, George. George? Huh? George, you tell your Uncle Linus I'd like to have one of these for every single person in it. Oh, I sure will. I'll tell him the minute he comes back. Yeah, you know, the, the hands were all real pleased with the picture because it turned out so good. You know, we had one fellow had a picture taken in St. Louis. It was terrible. Funny, he had two heads and everything. <sighs> That's a double exposure. Must have been a beginner. Uncle Enos doesn't make mistakes like that. We'd better be getting along. Tell your Uncle Enos we were in the scene. We'll see him again. Sure will. Bye. See you, George. is out in the country. I sure want to see him. I always wanted we go over to the courthouse, finish up that business of ours. Candy, I'd like you to stay here. Keep an eye out. As soon as you see Enos come back. Right, get us. Right. I saw Ben Cartwright come in here. I want to talk to him. Come and gone, Mr. Troxell. Oh, well, whatever he wanted, it didn't take him long. Huh? I don't know. He, he came and bought a whole bunch of them group pictures. <laughs> oh? Yeah. Oh, they think a lot of Uncle Enos's work. Uh, probably because uh, one of their hands had a picture taken by a beginner, and they got a double exposure. Double ex... <laughs> whatever that is. Well, thank you. Let me go, Roscoe. Ah, how did you know my name? How did you know my name? Let me Candy. Candy, my old friend, Candy. How you been, Candy? I'm in a hurry, Roscoe. Uh, Candy, I want your unvarnished opinion of me. You're an upstanding citizen, Roscoe. Now I gotta go. Thank you, Candy. There's a little apple knocker in there that says I am a big fat liverwurst. He's drunk. He's belligerent and he wants to fight. You go ahead and fight him. And let me go. Candy. I'm sorry. <laughs> Why is everybody so unfriendly? <laughs> Thank you. 
Jump Scanty in a big hurry. Well, after you left, Troxell came out and went in the photographer's place. And when he came back out, he, uh, he mounted up and rode off south. South? That'd be the Carson City Connor. That's what Venus is. Well, let's go. I'll get my horse to catch you. Let's go. I'll tell you what I'll do. If you whip this little old stinker for me, we'll go get a bottle of booze and a couple of girls, and we'll have a time. <laughs> Sorry, Roscoe. It's going to have to be later. You know, for an upstanding citizen, I'm down more than I'm up lately. <laughs> I came to warn you about the Cartwrights. They're after you about Judge Neely. How do you know? What happened? Well, they went to your studio looking for you. You mean they were looking for you, don't you? You're the one who pulled the trigger, not me. Now, you know there are only two people who know that? You and I. And that puts me in a very unfortunate position. Why? Well, they're going to want you to talk, and you probably will. Oh, no, no. You know I won't talk. I wish I could believe that. Now, why would I talk? Because you're a born loser, no. Enos. It's an old adage. Never trust a loser. No. Now you're a dead loser. Cato Trucks will kill Mr. Blessing the same as the judge, and I'll stake my life on it. But, Joe, I can't arrest a man without evidence, and there ain't a shred. You heard the verdict. Death at the hand of a person or persons unknown. Motive, robbery. And Enos had a thousand in gold on him. You're absolutely right. We heard George testify to that. There weren't any clues at all, Sheriff, none? Listen, I haven't had any sleep in three days. If any of you think you can do better, put on a star. Now, Milo, nobody's criticizing you. Well, I'm doing the best I can, and that's all I can do. Of course, we understand. How did Mr. Blessing's niece hold up at the funeral? Oh, well, as well as could be expected, I guess, under the circumstances. She certainly did. The fine young girl, and it's about time I went to call on her. Uh, Milo, you get yourself a good sleep now. You're not the first peace officer who's had an unsolved murder in his hands. See, Milo. Oh, you want us to go with you? No, I'll go by myself. See you back at the ranch. Right. Come on now. You can get 
to be a brave young woman. Try. Sounds like a very interesting idea. I... Didn't didn't uh, Uncle Lena say something about him wanting you to go to a female academy? Oh, I ain't got the money for a female academy. I want to be a female photographer, the first one this side of the Rockies. Well, that's it's a very laudable ambition. You you think you could uh, do it? Sure, I can. I'll show you. I'm making some prints. Here, give me your hand. It's awful dark in here. I've been working with Uncle Enos for about a year. I can pose the pictures. You've seen me do that. And I can work the camera. I've done it lots of times. And I've been helping him in the dark room. And, well, I think I can do it. What's that you're working on? These are the pictures Uncle Enos took that last day. He thought maybe he could sell them to a magazine. So I thought if, if they turn out, well, maybe I can sell them. Sure, why not? Good idea. Maybe I can help you. Oh, would you? Could you write a letter for me? I, I can't write very well. <laughs> of course, I'd be glad to. <sighs> Thanks. Mr. Cartwright, does the sheriff have any idea who done it? Not a one. That's awful. That's just awful. And a man can do something like that and get away with it. Oh, look. They're coming in. Look! Look! I came by to see if you might be interested in buying one of my Lake Tahoe properties. I have no further interest in your Lake Tahoe property. What are your interests, Mr. Troxell? Chiefly getting you off my back. You're becoming a nuisance, Cartwright. You're libeling my reputation, besmirching my character, and damaging my legal practice. I want it stopped. If it isn't, I'm going to take you to court. Court? You know. I think that might be the last place I'd want to be if I were under suspicion of murder. Now, if you're referring to the murder of Venus Blessing, there isn't a way in the world you can connect me with that crime. And if you mean Judge Neely, I've been exonerated by photographic evidence. And photographs don't lie. Yes, you're right. Photographs don't lie, I must agree with you. That's why I thought you might be interested in this photograph. Photograph exonerates me of murder. The other one convicts me. Old Marcus would have scorned me. Marcus? Marcus Porcius Cato. The noble Roman I was named for. Cato the censor. The enemy of crime and corruption. Cato. A very model of every Roman virtue. <laughs> <laughs>
Just like the judge predicted. Troxel and Troxel. On Boot Hill. You ride only once in a while, you hear? I don't want him to get rusty in the hinges. I'll ride him, Georgie. You? I don't want to come back here and find him sway-backed. <laughs> <laughs> All aboard, George. Thanks for everything, Mr. Cartwright. You ride now. Hey, don't forget. Promise to come see us on your vacation. Well, I hope you all recognize me. I'll be as ladylike as a hog on ice. <laughs> 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 